My name is Erik Ekkelendien, and I work as a day trader. Um, today I'm going to talk about myself, how I started, and how I became a trader. I'm also going to talk about my strengths and weaknesses as a person, um, and how I have designed my uh, strategy on the stock market, and how I trade. Uh, I bought my first stock as soon as I as soon as I could, without mom and dad knowing. I uh, started an account, put some cash on it, and took all the stocks and bought the one with the lowest price. The ones that were expensive were boring. And you, you all know how that went. I felt pretty early that uh, my patients weren't that um, good, so it led me to short-term trades, which uh, made me download the terminal and study stocks for the short term. I'm uh, 20 years, 27 years old and born and raised in Fallen, which is a small city in uh, Sweden. Uh, I have a bachelor degree in economics, uh, which I took in the University of uh, Örebro, which I also live uh, today. And, uh, work from. Um, I'm sports raised, which means that I um, was born and raised by uh, uh, two parents who love sports. My childhood was uh, only sports, only losing and winning. And that's something that I can really rely on in my work today, during the competitive instability and winning attitude. And uh, basically, the psychology in trading, uh, which also is the, the best subject that I know and to discuss with others, um, is something you can do whether you're trading with algos or um, having a small portfolio, big portfolio. Um, that's the favorite subject of, of trading. Uh, my main focus today is uh, day trading in Nordic stocks. Uh, big and small, whatever they do, if it's a bad or uh, a company that in bad shape, uh, or a company that went well, or uh, I just look for stocks with high vol volatility, um, great liquidity, um, and uh, I mostly find the stocks where uh, the trading news, it can be earning reports, press releases, whatever. Uh, those of you who read the papers, uh, those stocks that we're talking about and moving, um, most, mostly of them I'm trading. Uh, I've been a full-time trader now for three years. Even since I took my uh, uh, degree in economics, I've been trading full-time. Uh, I've been a full-time trader with, uh, with Norden ever since then also. Oh, there is my, my trading partner ever since. Today I'm going to talk about Four subjects. I'm going to talk about a little about me, myself, and I. Everyone here has a, a different approach to trading, um, and you can compare with with me or someone on Shareville or whatever. But it comes down to it's your plan, it's your strategy, your way. And that's what matters, and what. Uh, so we're going to look about that. Uh, then we're going to talk about my strength and my weaknesses. Uh, usually what I'm good at, uh, which is pretty easy to talk about when it's going well. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, my weakness. It's basically a, a process where I, I start with a bad feeling and how it turns out in the trades. Uh, and what I try to do to stop them and uh, what happens when it all goes, goes not too well. And we're going to look at some of my rules. Uh, I don't have any rules for the, the risk rewards. Um, I don't have the automatic stops. I don't uh, uh, have these written down by the, by the screen. So I just have some rules that uh, you're going to see later. But I don't want to make things complicated. Keep it simple and uh, do it my way. Yes, first of all, 
It's all about you and nobody else. The share wheel that the NuNet has is very nice. You can have, uh, you can follow good traders. You can follow long-term traders or uh, short-term traders. Um, but you should compare yourself with your ability, your goals. Uh, it's okay to be inspired, but don't let them steal you. You have to compare with your risk taking. You have to evaluate after your and your plan. Um, exactly, you don't know how much that trader has taken into risk. How active have you been? How, if you have a full-time job, maybe it's it's not so appropriate to evaluate or compare with me when where I'm a full-time trader. And also the ability, if you're new to trading, maybe you should uh, count on losing money in the beginning and do is like learning money. Um, and also the opportunities uh, for those who maybe trade uh, oil stocks or oil market later these late few weeks has been volatility, where if you don't trade in markets, you can't compare with the old trader. So you have to look into um, opportunities that has been given your strategy and what you use to trade. Uh, I also have one that is don't show. It's all about index. Everyone is talking about index. I want to beat index. Um, as a trader, I don't think the index doesn't matter at all, even if you trade index, of course. But the, as a day trader, you, the alternative to day trading isn't laying all in index. So if you're a stock picker and putting much time into analysis uh, for the stocks, then of course the index is a benchmark where you can compare with. But as a day trader, you, if index is down 2% and I'm down 1%, I won't be happy about that. I want to make money every day, even though the stock market is strong or weak. So don't compare yourself or don't look so much on index. So my strength. I have a good discipline. There's something that's grown over the years and also where, the, uh, where I was sports raised. Um, I made some, some of myself the peace and quiet in the market. I can sit for like three hours and doesn't do a trade. Um, I'm not trading for trading's sake, even though I love trading and it's very fun to trade. Um, when I'm in a good mood, I don't trade for the trading's sake. I trade when I see opportunity and where the analysis aligns with my opinion. I am also a quick thinker. Um, I know a little about everything or every stock in Sweden. Um, I don't know how, how the balance sheet of every company is, but I do know the stocks. And that's the price that I trade is more important for the balance sheet of the company in short terms. So I have a pretty quick decision-making process, which is very important if you want to day trade and, and take uh, quick, uh, quick decisions. If you don't take the quick decision, someone else buys the stock instead of you. I also found a good balance between work and leisure. Of course, it's very fun to, to work with your hobby, but I need to, every time I go to work, I need to be, I need to be balanced. I need to be uh, relaxed. I need to be, I need to have a good sleep. So if I'm not in a good mood, everyone, the, the market will beat me. Other traders will uh, trade the hell out of me, makes me take bad decisions. So my well-being is a high priority. That is a big tip if you want to succeed as a trader. Take care of yourself. So it's also good to have a, a good confidence, of course, but you still need to be humble. As Marty Swartz said, I became a winning trader when I was able to say, 
to hell with my ego, making money is more important. And that is very true. Even though you still have a confidence, if you have a position that not going so well, you can of course be confident, but you still need to be humble before the market. Sometimes the market feels like it's chasing you or uh, putting you in a bad position or it's after you or you need to adjust to the market. The market is the market and by myself, I'm not bigger than the market, so I have to adjust. It's a good confidence, but still need to be humble for, for the trading and for the market. Uh, adjustable. I often work out the feeling that suits for the moment. And uh, this is why I also look much at index. I use index as a more of an indicator how the sentiment for the stock market is uh, also on long and on short terms. Uh, is it a high volatility or is it slow going, slow going down? Uh, that is something that I use when I trade trading stocks, even though I trade very micro stocks or small stocks. And it's something that if the stock market is very weak, the smaller stocks might be even weaker. So that is something that I, I try to having my analysis. And also the, the winning mentality that I grown up with. Uh, I played a lot of golf when I was younger. And there's something that uh, I'm used to the fight against myself. I, and that's the best thing about trading. Every time I go to work, I put on a trade and get the feedback from the market right away. So, uh, it feels like a, like a, a trading addict. It's the best thing about trading is you get the feedback from the market right away. But the question is, how strong are they when it's more difficult for me on the market? This is a process, uh, usually a process where, where it goes wrong for me, I usually do these mistakes. Uh, it usually starts with a worse feeling. It can come from, from anywhere. They come from one trade might not get me till, but ten bad trades in a row gets me real frustrated. But it can also come from other things. It comes from a, I'm arguing with my girlfriend, or I'm feeling sick, or something else that bothers me. That is why also the my well-being is high priority. But it gets me tilt, so it leads to uncertainty. It makes me shaky and nervous. I take the trade, but I don't know how to uh, take it in forward. Uh, I, fear a lot. I fear a lot, where I focus on the results. I uh, check my P&Ls, looking at, feeling like the, the money is flowing through my fingers, and I'm just selling all the stocks in panic. I don't want to see it anymore. Uh, but typically, things that can happen. Trading too much, trading too little, uh, unimbalanced for the patience that I used to have, uh, which is very important to have. The, the stocks that I usually use to trade and buy, uh, I'm just sitting there and looking at them and knowing what I should do, but I can't pull the trigger or trading too much. It's very easy to, to over trade. Uh, trade something that I want to see or a movement that I wish to happen and the following and the, I... Not so good. So often least the FOMO. FOMO is fear of missing out. It feels like uh, uh, my three neighbors in the office, it feels like they just rolling in the big money every Every trade they made, we have this uh, small sound in the computers. And every time when I'm in this mode and their sound goes off, it feels like in my mind, oh my god, they're making every money. Uh, I'm feeling FOMO. Uh, which leads me to, I became very irritated. Which leads me to impulsive decisions. I uh, try to 
chase the, the winning trades or try to make up for all the losses that I made. Uh, I also get pretty frustrated. I have uh, destroyed a couple of keyboards. Uh, so my colleague, they bought me a, a, like a stress ball when I used to squeeze. It's, it works for now. Uh, so when I feel that, it's time for a reset. And there is something, it's an easier said than done. And the timing of the reset should probably have been where I'm feeling the worst feeling, when I'm feeling uncertain. Uh, so there is time for the reset. But most of the times it uh, goes all the way. And the reset can be, it's a very personal thing to do. I usually sit, usually sit all the trading hours for, for the Swedish market. Uh, I can sell all the chairs and just wait for the one trade to come. It doesn't matter if I make up for all the losses, but one good trade can change the, the feeling that I'm feeling and becoming for the good ones again. Uh, but some of my colleagues, they, they shut down their computer and uh, won't see them for a week or they come back the next day. So it's very individual how you do the things. But you, I think that you should stick to one thing and do the one that feels for you. Nothing is right or nothing is wrong, but do the, the right thing for you. So my rules. Uh, when I was new to trading, I read a lot of books where the you saw the risk reward. You should risk risk one for reward of three. Uh, uh, that's the best thing about trading. It's nothing else like the the theory. It's different in practice. So. I have rules like this. I generally have no position on that. Uh, I like to start every day from zero. It's very nice to come into the office after the gym, feeling fresh, have no stocks to worry about. I can focus on what's new and current. I have a new fresh head when I go to, go to the job. It's simple. And if I have a bad decision at the end of the day, usually the stock won't open up, so the uh, best thing is to just sell all the chairs before, before they close. But I try to, um, to keep the losses down. That is very important. Uh, if you do the trading, you focus on how much money you can earn and, and that stuff, but it is very important to have the risk management, even though I, I can say that I have the risk management as the books, but you don't want to let uh, a big deal ruin everything. That's not worth it. But every time that I am taking a big loss, uh, it feels awful to take it, but five minutes after, after I took it, I actually feel enlightened. I feel like, huh. Oh. So I'm trying to do that earlier, but uh, so after I take a big loss, it's always nice to, to do what you like. I can trade, trade a stock that I'm feeling good with or have the confidence in the moment. Uh, as you, I can trade for about 20 to 25 stocks per day. And some of the stocks are, oh God, I hate them. Like a low confidence in three stocks. I can't trade them. Even though it moves like all the other stocks, I can't trade them. So skip the skip the market where you don't understand. Is the next one. Trade what you understand. It also gives me confidence in the trade. Even though I like to trade the ones with high volatility, except when uh, cryptocurrencies were new. Uh, I didn't understand it even though I traded it, but uh, uh, it was fun, but I, all the time that it took, it depended on uh, whether I'm 
I understand the market or not. Today I understand crypto. Today I really can trade crypto with confidence. So trade a market where you understand and which that you like. I like stocks because I like uh, to read about uh, the companies and the, the segments or, or something else. So there's, there's a lot of markets where you can trade. So focus on one or yeah, pick some. Don't trade them all because you can't. It's better to trade some markets or stocks very good than to, straight, than to trade the whole market. This is my setup, my physical setup. Uh, I used the Infront terminal, which uh, all the active traders for, for Nordnet can use. As you can see, I, I to the left, I already have the commodities and world index and some of the forex, even though I don't trade it. Um, it has a big impact on the stocks that I'm trading. Example, uh, where we have the, the mining companies where the, the copper price exactly uh, are, are having big impact on the stocks. Uh, so that's typically that I can watch. Uh, I don't have any, so much of the graphs. You see here to the left, I have four stocks where I have the, the order book and the price and who's selling and uh, so to the left, I'm more market making and to the right is my main focus. There's all the news, there are all the trade ticker where I can see all the, the trades that are coming by. Uh, so this is something that also you can see in the front terminal. You can see your, your buying trades. I'm only gonna uh, uh, show winning trades because I don't do bad trades. So here's Securitas example. Uh, they have the, the earning release at uh, one o'clock. It was uh, a beat, it was a good report. But so I bought, I was pretty earlier. And this time feels like an hour. So basically if you're wrong, if you if you're right, it's like mm, profit, take it. And you keep some of the stocks, like, mm, more profit. Mm. And then they sold all the bonds. Oh, satisfied. You close the stock and you go to someone else and then you look one other. So sometimes, this is what I've been working on, trying to keep the profits or running, uh, make the profits run. And it's very hard. I also trade the, the futures. This is the uh, Wemex from, uh, it can be in, uh, I think it's the beginning of November where the stock market were really, really, really weak. Anyway, it was, a, it was a good day. I hate to trade the future markets. I have no idea how to trade it. But this day, it went well. But I also short a lot of stocks. Uh, I had the, the question earlier here, how much my position is long or short. And I would say it's like 50-50. Uh, know that is the, the best partner uh, to have the possibility to short stocks as a day trader, uh, even pretty small stocks as well. So here it was, I think it's a Danish company who had a profit warning. Uh, so I sold some shares when it was down, yeah, one or two percent. I took some in when it was down three, and I was like, oh my god, I took it when it was down six. What a good trade. So I took the money, took the trade, and yeah, later on you often check to the, oh, what happened to that stock? Uh, so often you feel like you're a stupid, stupid trader. And also here uh, in Catina Media, it was some of the news. I had no idea if this is an old trade. But uh, basically what I'm gonna tell you about my strategy is it's very cash flow. I do one big trade, I make money, and I leave it. Yeah. 
So my equity curve is slow up going. Um, so that is different how you are as a trader. But I am a very cash flow trader where I make a lot of, as you can see on this, a lot of sell and trade, small profits all the way. And uh, in the end, it becomes uh, a great profit. And this is also something that I use in my in front terminal is the, the broker statistics which shows uh, which banks or which brokers how they're selling, how much they're selling, etc. And so I don't know which stock this is, but uh, example here you see this uh, big seller in, in pink or in purple, uh, whatever. Uh, and it feels like there's no one other seller that was so aggressive as he is. And here he took a, like a lunch for two hours. And during this time, the, uh, the supply with the price goes down. And the, the buyers are still buying. And often as the price moves up, they always stop selling. So this is a... Uh, very good way to use terminal and also a uh, pretty simple way to understand how stocks can move based on how other people sell or buy. Uh, this is a big thing about the terminal. And also the, yeah, now it's on Swedish, but uh, also the, all the news flashers that we have in, uh, in the terminal, so I could just click on this and I get up the stocks and I can buy a stock in one second. So if you're a day trader, this is a very good uh, tool to have. Uh, I never use the, the website to trade. Uh, I always have this with me. And also the, the trade ticker where you can snap up action and where people are selling or just throwing out some, some stock for a good price. Uh, this is the place where you can find that and find information about other stocks uh, as well. Questions? Hey, uh, hey, thanks for a good presentation and a little bit of insight on what goes on in the head of a real trader. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you brought a point on uh, trade the stocks that you know. So you said that you know all the stocks in Sweden, but you don't follow them intensely you don't know what's going on in each of them. Yep. So have you found like a good guideline on how many stocks you should actually look at at any given point of time? Like how many can you really keep a good focus on them? And what maybe other people could take as a guideline on uh, if, you, if it should be 20 companies or 30 companies or, or, or how have you any comments on that? Yeah, good question. Uh, often I have like a maximum five position at a time and if I get too many uh, I often pick them out and sell a bit to lower the risk but uh, mostly five at a time uh, but during the day it became many fives so but uh, it, it depends also how you what your plan with the with the trade was was it gonna is it five stocks that I'm gonna hold the whole day or is it five stocks that I wanted to hold five minutes? Uh, but basically, five at a time. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hi. Uh, you showed a couple of examples of, of trades that you did when news came out midday. How, how do you cope with the fact that there are machines trading those those results that come midday and those profit warnings and, and they react in milliseconds? Yeah, good question. Uh, sometimes they don't, sometimes I have no idea. Uh, today, uh, all the, the algos are there and um, sometimes they're very, very fast and sometimes they have no clue. Uh, as in Securitas here, uh, it took a while. It took like 30 seconds before the stocks went moving, after we, as a trader, 
in our terminal we're able to, to read the numbers. Uh, so it depends. Sometimes they're really, really fast or sometimes they are still selling when we're buying them. So, uh, good question, uh, but still they're not as good as we think they are. Uh, uh, as lead, as lead in the in this market. Hello, Eric. Uh, I have a question. Uh, what makes you get in some particular stack in the morning? Let's say, what kind of homework do you do before you get in some particular stack? Uh, often, I play with the the liquidity, uh, like mean the. the the price, how it how it moves, how the I can subscribe when we see someone is buying a lot of shares or selling a lot of shares. So I I often so the other do the work for me. I just tag along. If I see a big buyer, I just follow him with the uh, with the price moves up. Or here, I think I went long here. And after he came back, and no one else like continued to buy in the same way, the price went down, so I went short. That is typically something that I, uh, something a, a day trade uh, usually. Thank you. Huh? Well, thanks. This was very interesting. Mm -hmm. I just have a short question for you. Uh, can we follow you on Shell too? Uh, I started with Cherville uh, a couple of years ago when it was uh, new. Uh, after uh, it became so popular uh, on Twitter, I have over 20,000 followers. So if I uh, do the same with Cherville, then I'll probably get 8,000 followers. If I buy a small stock with a little bit smaller liquidity, I will draw the price up, which I probably would sell my stock. So uh, it doesn't follow with the uh, the ethics of it because it's so popular in social media, at least in Sweden. So uh, I'm afraid you can't follow me on Cheryl. That's why um, I worked there under uh, a nickname that I didn't uh, provide to anyone, but. Uh, it, I became uh, uh, popular there as well, so I closed it down. So I'm afraid not. Okay, thanks. I think that <laughs> was the problem. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Eko, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.